I'm this Jason with uh, JDB Classic VW and welcome back to the garage and my goose, my baby, my 1956 Owen top. And we are doing torque plates today. Torque plates for your VW Beetle, your air-cooled engine. Hmm. Well, I've seen some people using them on their builds, you know, those high-end builds. So I kind of thought, why not have some fabbed up for this build? Which build? Let me turn it around real quick. This build right here, guys, the... 2276 turbo EFI build. This is actually the second time I've ran through rebuilding this thing. The first time I did it, as you guys have been paying attention to my other videos, uh, I already did total sealed rings. And I rehoned the old cylinders. Oh, baby. And I think that my tune was off. Yep, because my tune was off. I ended up washing out the cylinders. <laughs> In the last video, we talked about the fuel regulator, the air metal motor fuel regulator. We put a new gauge on here, and we also put a new uh, sensor, fuel pressure sensor on here as well. I ended up going with a 90, guys, because, well, it fit better, and I can actually get the uh, plug on there. I still haven't routed the plug off the harness over to this side yet i'm gonna get around to that maybe today maybe not today we'll see a couple things going on with the build as you guys saw in the intro yeah i've already done the deck heights i only had one deck height that was a bit off but uh that is definitely within tolerance for me i'm good to go with that compression ratio stays about the same or really darn close to it even with that little bit being off and you guys can see that I'm running two different types of spacers here. I got a mark for the cylinders. I got the copper spacer that goes from the head of the, uh, the cylinder head to the top of the the cylinder itself, and then this goes on the bottom of the cylinder to provide spacers to pro provide the space that I need to get the compression ratio that I'm looking for, which is like between 8.5 to 1, 8.8 .8 to 1. I think I'm at 8.8 .8 to 1 right now, which works for me so we're gonna go ahead and do the x and y axis and then different levels a b and c when it comes to the cylinder a being the top or close to the top of the cylinder itself the middle of the cylinder and then the bottom of the cylinder we're gonna check and see if the torque plates make any kind of difference so before we carry on with uh these torque plates and see what's going on don't forget guys to like share and subscribe this content share with some of your buddies some of the guys out there you like What's Jason got going on over there with that turbo? Hit the little link off to the side and then tell your buddies. Tell the other VW people out there. Hey, check out JW Classic VW. Now, back to the video. So let me go ahead and bring over the number one piston stuff. Okay, here we go. Number one piston. If you guys are just tuning in to this to see what the heck torque plates are all about. These are JE Forged Pistons. Yeah, forged to be able to handle some real power, baby. And, uh, yeah, what's this cramp on the top? That's Cerakote. Cerakote's some good stuff. It's supposed to help out when it comes to keeping carbon deposits from collecting on the top of the piston. Help out with heat staying inside the cylinder and going out through the exhaust and not being absorbed into the top of the piston as well. How much of a difference does it make? I'm not sure. I will say that lots of race car drivers out there, they Cerakote all kinds of crap. So... Why not? It was a good idea. I know somebody that does it, so I went ahead and did it. All my deck heights have been done, like I already told you guys. But now, let's talk about what we're going to be doing when it comes to measuring the actual cylinder itself. Now, I told you there's going to be two main measurements. So when you're looking at your, your uh, cylinder, let's say like this is in there. This is number one, so this would be the top. So this is number one, and it's in there. This would be your x-axis, or x, y, one of those x-axis y-axis so you're going like that so what do we what do you need well you need a bore gauge first i picked this one up off of amazon it's worked out pretty good so far 3.6 inch 
you have different uh, bore sizes here for your gauge. Let's go ahead and take this off right here. Let's drop our gauge on here. We'll be rotating this gauge around some too as we're kind of like looking at the measurements. You need to measure the, the skirt on your piston. Every manufacturer is going to have a little bit different for these JE pistons. It's about half an inch up from the bottom of the skirt is where you want to measure. Because this is where you get your initial measurement when it comes to how you're going to be looking at your bore gauge. And I'll show you this here in a second. All right. So you don't want to be hitting here too much. You want to be hitting on the, the outer portion of the micrometer. And can you guys see that all right? I think you can. It's always more fun when I'm trying to do this and make sure that you guys can see it too. Just want to make sure that you're nice and centered up. And we are. You just want it to drag a little bit on there. That should be good. We'll lock it out. I'll lock it out and then I'm going to check and see. Hmm... Go ahead and try to get that a little bit tighter. Just a little bit tighter. Lock it out. That feels good. Let's move over to the vise and get this in place. So that's our measurement right there. Let's check it in millimeters. 91.98, almost 92 on the spot. What we're wanting to do is zero out the bore gauge with the measurement that we have set up on the piston skirt. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take this as best as I can. I might, yeah, I think I can use the inside of this micrometer. There we go. Just kind of have this in here, level it out and then zero out on that measurement. Uh, it's almost there. Once you have it zeroed out, you want to go lock in your dial indicator. And now we're good to go. Good to go to measure a cylinder. All right, got it written down. So the X and Y is like this because, remember, with the Volkswagen piston, when it, number one is in the up position, this, this would be your X axis. And then your Y is the one across the flat, the flat right there. So when you lay it down, you got your X axis and your Y axis. We're gonna measure those first at the top of the piston. So we'll do like a T1, T2 on X and Y. So T1, T2, and this is for X, and then Y. Like that. We're gonna take those measurements and I'm gonna do the ABC. So like just different measurements at the different elevations inside the cylinder or depths or what you wanna say. I'm gonna do it pre and then post torque plate. All right. And we're just looking for the difference. What kind of difference are we seeing here? This is also checking your skirt distance or how much space you got in your skirt. And it's going between two and five thousandths. Yeah, we don't have much movement at all there.
All right, guys, torque wrench is set to 25 foot-pounds. Let's go ahead and see what we got. Remember, everything was miking out at 2,000. Let's go ahead and just, uh, just do some general checking. First up with the uh, X axis, X axis, axis, axis. Jeez Louise, I'm having some troubles with that. So I'm at, at the bottom, I got it nice and straight. You guys can see that there is hardly any movement down. Yeah, if I go back and forth, for sure you're gonna see it. See moving because yeah, I'm moving the, the gauge off of center. But when I'm on center, we're, we are right at about, let's bring it up. Do you guys see that? Whoa, let's wait to the top. So the torque plate doesn't make much of a difference there. Let's try the Y, bring you guys over to it. All right, that's the Y. Just straight up and down. You guys are getting some glare there. Let me see if I move you a little bit. A little less glare, maybe. Well, it's about what I suspected we would see with brand new cylinders, that the, the torque plates wouldn't make a huge difference. Now, like I told you before, I think that if you were to use torque plates after uh, a rebuild, say that you're replacing your pistons or you're replacing just your rings, and you're having to do a hone, on your cylinders then yeah you might see a difference when it comes to using torque plates but using these torque plates the one i had the ones that i had made up by my buddy uh, i'm not seeing any kind of uh change when it comes to differences with the torque plates installed versus not installed it's good stuff guys good stuff i know i'm probably not getting you know i'm not gonna use them this time but uh i'll probably leave them installed still when i go ahead and hone these bad boys out real quick because uh I don't know if you guys know VW Darren, but uh, he's one of the guys that I like to watch. He's he's one of the, the old school goats when it comes to building engines, and I kind of believe what he has to say. And he's rebuilt quite a few engines using these AA cylinders, and he recommends that you run a home through them before you gap and put anything new in there just to clean them out pretty much. So I'm going to hone these real quick, throw some light oil in there, hone them out, and then start working on the rings, guys. I've already done a, a video on piston rings, and I'm not going to go back over that again. But uh, hopefully next time we'll be getting some assembly done. There's a couple other things I want to show you real quick. Turning around. So I went ahead and resealed the block off plate here on the Autolina engine case because I have a remote oil filter. You guys have seen the video before. It's up here in the corner if you haven't. On uh, the remote oil cooler bracket that I built, I'm running a Sebring pretty pretty nice pretty expensive oil external oil cooler underneath the goose over there i'm also going to be taking everything apart on the bottom here and resealing up my sump why not while well, i got it apart and then tapping out this bottom fill location i'm going to tap it and put a plug in here because i'm tired of having to take apart my lines whenever i do an oil change of having to crack my lines here and i just think that that's retarded <laughs> so we're we're gonna, we're gonna get away from that but that's gonna do it for today, guys. So, torque plates. Eh, and I'm not sure if I'm believing the hype yet. Once again, I haven't tried using them when it comes to a rebuild, but when it comes to new pistons and cylinders, I didn't really see much of a difference between torque plate installed versus torque plate not installed. But that's just me. What's your experience? Comment below, guys. Appreciate you guys putting some uh, love down in the comment section. Coming up soon, yeah, you guys see this? We've got some lights. I'm gonna install some lights in the engine compartment. I've already got underglow lighting installed on Goose because, you know, I'm a child at heart. <laughs> That's it for today, guys. Appreciate you tuning in. Hope you have a great work week. Hope you got out in the, the garage a little bit this weekend, did some work on your baby, maybe went to some shows. What have you guys been up to? Don't forget to join the Facebook group and or check out the instagram facebook group is cool because you get in there and you can show me what you guys are working on i love seeing your projects as well and uh yeah that's it for today guys have a great week 
Talk to you soon. This is Jason with Jaden Fast VW and Zeus. Bye-bye, guys.